Hello all. So, here So I, I want to start a new series. In April this year it will be the 30th anniversary of my first computer animation. To celebrate I'm going to recreate the process on original hardware. So I got this old Unisys laptop to run a 386 SX similar to the system I had which was a Packard Bell back in 1991. Uh, this system however turned out to be pretty unique on its own so I'm making this video showing the inside of it because I haven't found it on YouTube yet. So this is a Unisys power port. If you look, it's got a very nice backboard, it's got a nice bus connector, RS-232, parallel port, modem connection, keyboard, two serial ports, there's a video back there, sorry, power, very nicely printed explanation of what all the ports are and made so you can read it from when you're looking over the top. Notice this laptop's also missing something. You see there's no screen on here. We'll add that later. But essentially these push in. And there's a, the screen's actually made to disconnect. There's a uh, type of high quality removable pin plug there. The keyboard also is a very nice tough keyboard. Clicky keyboard. Now I've already cleaned the system up a bit. When I first got it, I thought the floppy drive was bad. It turned out to just be the all my old 3.5 disks of junk. That's a whole different problem with all the 3.5 disks dying. So the hard drive hauler here was dead. I replaced it. It came with a 62 megabyte counter. I re replaced it with a 120 megabyte counter. I'm not going to show it right now, but this laptop is very well built. Here's the connector for the LCD screen. I had to replace the battery because obviously the 30 year old battery was dead. So it's just a, a CR32 soldered on to the old connector. There you can see some of the stuff in there. It did work, it powered on, I got it on eBay. It worked from day one as far as powering on. It took me quite a while to get it to boot on, off a hard drive into DOS, but it did eventually. So now I'm going to make this video because I have this bad boy, which I'm thinking might almost be brand new, never used. I have this co-processor. Is that focus? Maybe not. So it's a 387, 20 megahertz. Now there's a version of these made for a power saving laptop. But I don't, I don't believe this laptop is new enough for that. I don't know what year this laptop is from, but it appears to have a regular processor. So the co-processor hopefully will work with it. Unfortunately, the circuit, the where it's being pulled to access that point, which is actually the first time I'm actually have probably a, a, a guard. Uh, it's hard to tell these pins. If it's been used or not before. So looks a little beat up, but it, I mean, it is what it is. It's technology of the day. So let's pull this keyboard off. The nice thing about this laptop, so this is the drive for it. It's a pretty rare drive. I found some online, but they're hundred dollars. But it just uses a normal floppy connector. You can actually connect just a regular, any regular floppy. Of course, it won't fit in this form factor. That's the problem. But I mean, as far as operationally, it'll work. It's got uh, four extra mega RAM, which is pretty powerful for back in the day. So it's like got five meg all together, which is going to be perfect because my old system had. 5 meg, 1 meg on board, 4 additional. So it's literally the same except for mine was 16 megahertz instead of. Oh shoot. Okay, there goes my screws. So I have to count 3 4 screws. This is a grounding connector here. Yeah. Pull that off. 
I don't want to disconnect this thing all the way up, so I'm doing this kind of goofy. I lost a screw in there somewhere, we'll have to find that. These are grounding strips. I probably ought to find that screw right away, huh? the RF shield. Uh, okay, this, yeah. this is all Phillips screws, so that's kind of nice. This Unisys machine, I don't know if this is a true original Unisys machine, but it's built really nice, so I believe it. I think the later ones were, they would just take another laptop and put Unisys name on it. This one might be in-house. So, if anyone knows, please let me know. Okay, let's pull this sucker off. So the question is, first, is this co-processor even good? Second of all, is whatever connection on the board good for the co-processor? And third, can I put it on without wrecking it? <laughs> if I haven't already wrecked it, I probably should have. Whatever. I ain't scared. Let's put this on that. So there is its future home, right? I'm not going to lift the board up, but there's the 386SX. There's the support chips. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty nice setup. It's basically a full computer. Okay, so there's the pin. Oh, uh, shoot, where's pin one on this thing? I believe it's right there. Oh, it probably match the CPU. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, what is that? What is this thing doing? Some debris, or is that supposed to be painted on there? Hmm. Well, I'm assuming it'll be oriented the same direction as the CPU, hopefully. If not, I guess I'll blow it, burn it out, huh? Alright. Do I need to adjust any of these? I just can't really see on there. What is this thing? wrong with it. So that's pin one. There's pin one on the CPU. Gotta match it up. It's white in there too, but I can't tell if it's debris or if it's intentional. Let's put that on there. Carefully push down. Ooh. I'm not liking this. I hate these old style pushing chips there. Alright, I can't even hardly see to see if that thing's pin to pin, but I don't see anything super evil going on. So it's kind of mushy when you push these in. It's not a solid contact. I don't think it's in there. Fuck. Alright, well, whatever. If it doesn't go up the smoke when I turn it on. Alright. So let's look this up. This goes under here. to has DOS 4.01 on it. 
which would match what I had. I forgot how much was missing even from DOS 4. No move command, a lot of stuff missing. Okay. But it is a 120 meg hard drive, which is pretty decent size for the time. I'm going to copy everything by floppy. I have a Windows XP machine I can hook up to my network. I can move data onto a floppy drive, it seems to be good on it. And then from there onto here, I tried hooking a floppy drive up to my Linux system. Ubuntu 18 worked fine with it, but Ubuntu 20 seems to not like the floppy drive. So. Sees it and everything, but then I try to actually use it, it freaks out. Okay, so let's put that there. And then we'll put these around. I don't know how important these are, but I'll put them back since I got them. So, where does this one go? Um, how does this one go on, huh? this. It's like that. Good. That would sit like that. Just do that in. Just get them seated there. Hopefully, so it doesn't self destruct when I turn it on. Now this case is actually cast metal, very nicely built. This is not plastic, this is metal. Whole case is some type of die cast metal, like a Hot Wheel car type of metal. Feels like it.
Okay, kind of pitch it a little bit already. There's a circuit, little circuit board here. You put this together, you gotta make sure you, you go like this. Reach in here and push that down so that it's gonna clear that circuit board. All right? Let's pull that sucker up. I think I got it together. That is the coolest battery. When we get together, you'll see that. All my screws and such. Excuse me for a second. Part is the center piece here. How do you know if you got it together or not? See how nicely that's built? Tank. Right. Let me those here. Maybe. Let's put lines up. I didn't pinch any wires in there. I think, I think powers up without the battery too, so that's nice. Oh yeah, I can feel that popping. Just leave it in here. These small ones go on the front. You don't need to tighten these very much. Just snug them. Nice ones, all metal threads. I'm sure be pretty screwed if I wrecked them. Oop, like that. <laughs> I didn't write that one. Okay, that looks good. Not sure I know what's going on there. Okay, I'm just gonna call that good. A power connector. I don't know if that's for charging or what that's for. So, oh, yes, the battery. I'm going to take it back out, but this is a very spe most incredible thing, right? Just toward this end, towards rear of the unit. That's how the battery's in. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but you hit the button. It just pops out. Pretty neat. Alright. Now, everything in here good. Buttons work. They seem to work. Let's find out. That one looks great. This one's been a little bit iffy. Seems to be good. Everything really seated well. We have a winner. These this seem to be jammed. Drive is sitting flush and good. Alright. Now for some more cool stuff. Monitor. Since I can't hook this up to the display right now. Ooh, let me check that cable up there. That's going to be okay. Well, we're going to have to be. Let's put the other one. So, here's the monitor. Brighten this contrast. There's the data pin. And this monitor is actually made to come off the unit, which is just incredible. So, you can use it like an old Apple or Amstrad or something like that. So, these fold and push these little pins out, right? This goes on here. Let's see if we can get some video. So, 
the little door on there, and that'll push in. Right? Make sure that pushing thing clears and carefully push this in. Do not remove the power on. Yes. Okay. Make sure this closes properly. There we go. Look at that, huh? Got ourselves a winner. Pushing the buttons in. Open it up. Now, since it works, or if I'm going to fry. Power, power, power. There it is. Okay. So pretty meaty power supply, as you can see. Supply. Unisys power supply. <laughs> it's hardcore, huh? Output 16 volts, 2.5 amps. So it has like a removal plug. It's kind of nice. I don't know. It must be. Well, it is. So let's plug this thing in. Alright. This was running a couple days ago. So we will see if it still runs. Here's my power plug. Let's do this. Oh, I like that it has a physical a power switch. It actually has a real power switch. That's nice. Plug that in. Hold that. I don't know if you'll see any on screen but hard to do nothing. Oh, it's powering up. Now this thing can't see past the year two thousand, so I had to is that set the battery or set the time to nineteen ninety nine. Bad commander file name. Alright, we are working. I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me see the screen a little bit. All right? Well, this does do VGA graphics. I was playing a game earlier. Oh, it's got an old hard drive. I gotta be careful to say I'll trash the hard drive in it. Okay. I was hoping this would fold back farther back, but it doesn't. So let me put this on here. Alright. Working, so we go to CD system, and let's see if we can see the coprocessor or not. Sys info. And there it is, math coprocessor. Try to bring that up to the screen. Here's everybody. Math coprocessor 8037. We got a winner. Well, now I just gotta wait for my video capture unit. And we'll uh, start having some fun, some real time 1991 CAD stuff. I'll be trying to resurrect a program called AutoShade, which is a 3D rendering program from way back in ancient times. And uh, it works with AutoCAD, which is still around. AutoCAD is. We'll get into that till in the show. Thank you for watching. Bye.